friends, this is Bijou Baker. I'm Maria. Black Forest Cake. You in or you out? Personally, not a fan of cherry. However, this one's just so fun to make. Now, there's several components to this, but once you do each individual component separately, it comes together effortlessly. Last night, I baked um, my million dollar chocolate cake recipe, that's below, that's a cake I use for 99% of all my chocolate cakes. I'd be safe to say 100. If the cake is a chocolate cake, I'm using a recipe I know and trust, um, which is this one. Okay, so the chocolate cake is made. Now, for my beginning bakers, I bake by sight. Um, like when I don't measure when I pour the batter into three individual uh, cake pans, I just pour by sight. It's good enough for me. Some people actually take and put a, a scale and get exactly drop for drop. Okay, you work what works with you. Um, in this case, I have one that's a little bit thicker and two that are about the same size. That's fine because that thicker one's going to go right in the middle and it's going to look like I intended it to be that way. But when it's done, I really doubt you'll see a difference. Okay, that's just an FYI for later when you're baking and you see that they're not even. Don't worry about it. Okay, the cherries. There's, I'm going to give you two ways to do everything. My way and then uh, a cheap version. Both are good. They're just very different. A cheap version would be to use Comstock cherry filling, the pie filling in the middle. That's okay. That's absolutely okay. I took cherries, I took about two pounds of cherries and I pitted them. And then I ended up with all these, with this bowl of pits, but there was so much pulp and juice in those pits. I wasn't, I wasn't willing to um, throw them as, as they were. So, um, I put about a tablespoon of Oh, here, here's what I did. Okay, so if you know me, you know I don't like to waste anything. So I took the pits of the cherries and I put about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more of sugar, and I let them soak overnight. What? Look at how clean the cherry pits are. So I got off all of that juice. Because, you know, it leaves quite a, quite a bit of pulp and stuff on it. So I just need the juice for my icing. So I put it in the strainer and I'm just gonna let it sit and let it give me as much uh, of the drippings as I possibly can. Nothing goes to waste. So I let them sit overnight. I'm kind of jumping around here. So this is what this is what I have, and that's a nice good amount of cherry syrup. This I'm gonna put into my icing. It's gonna give me a little bit of pink and a little bit of cherry flavoring. That's what we want, right? The cherries themselves, once I pitted them, I chopped them up and I put, now watch me lie, two and a half cups of sugar in it. Because when the cherries are just in the bowl, they're, they're completely, you're not gonna get a lot of juice that way. So you have to smash them. Um, once you smash them, you put the sugar in, let it sit overnight, covered, and the sugar pulls out so much juice. That's what we want. We're going to bring it to a boil and get it thick, and I'm going to add a little bit of cornstarch in this as it's thickening, but this is what, this is what I have to start off with. Okay, you see that? Look at all that, look at all that juice. There's a lot of juice in there. And the sugar, the sugar is on the bottom. I mean, there's a lot of sugar. It, it's you're making, you know, just like any other um, fruit compote. The only thing that's changing is the fruit. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to get this on the stove. And a pit. Yeah, that will be something you'll look for, but they're gonna pop up. They're gonna pop up and show themselves, so. Uh, we've got plenty of time on the stove to be looking for these things. Why do I think I should be wearing an apron today? 
then of course a white shirt. All right, so let's go get this on the stove. But wait, I'm I'm jumping ahead too far. Sorry, the very first thing I'm gonna do today is I'm going to make the um, finishing decorations. Talk about backwards, but this is the part that makes it really kind of cool. So all I did was I took some um, wafers, melting wafers, and I microwaved them a few seconds, 30 seconds, mixed them, 30 seconds, mixed them. This went pretty fast. So in about a minute and a half, I got this beautiful chocolate. I'm going to pour this chocolate onto this cookie sheet. To rolling this up is to let this sit for just a little bit. Otherwise, when it's wet on wet, it's going to flop and fold, not roll. So I'm going to let this sit, dry out just a little bit, and then I'm going to roll it up and stick it in a cup to keep its shape. Okay, so it's the shine for the most part is gone, but it's still pliable. So I'm just going to roll this up. This looks good. I don't, I don't need a uh, cup, but it's just to keep the circular shape. So I'll do it just because I said I was going to. So that's it. I mean, should it roll up, you can see you don't need it. Okay, but I'm going to just, just leave me alone. <laughs> okay, next on over to the stove. So here I was worried about the um, cherry juice spiraling on me instead of the chocolate. <laughs> Wardrobe change, we're good. <laughs> okay, let's, let's make the compote. Again, remember, everything is done the same way if you're doing strawberry compote, berry compote, whatever. You get it. Let's go. Okay, always, always, always in your stages test stuff because if something's wrong here, I have a little window to fix it. Um, once it's thickened and it's done what it needs to do, you can still fix it, but, and, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a, not a cherry kind of girl. And this stuff is hot, but it's hot. Wow. I'm going to confess. Last time I made this, 15 years ago, this, this compote. Um, boy, did I forget how amazing it is. This is good. Okay. Everything's good. I'm going to pop in a touch of vanilla and then uh, wrap it and chill it. Now again, when I wrap it, I'm gonna wrap it right on top of the uh, goodies. So I'm gonna let it cool for just a bit so it doesn't cook the plastic wrap. Once it cools for about, I don't know, 20 minutes, I'm gonna cover the actual uh, compote right on top, not the bowl. Stick in the refrigerator until it's, it's cold and ready to be used. My cakes are done, my filling is done. We're gonna work on the icing when this is almost ready and then put it together. So like I said, when you do everything one step at a time, you can do this. Don't look at the big picture and say, oh my gosh, how am I gonna do it? Just like me, one step at a time. All right, we'll be back. Look, we match. Um, it's ready. Look how thick it is, can you see? Now, I, I left the cherry pieces big. Looks kind of gross, <laughs> but it's really tasty. <laughs> Shut up, Maria. Um, I left the pieces big. I chopped them last night with the sugar to release the juices. And I just kind of smushed them a bit. Well, I made sure every cherry was at least cut once. Smashed them, let them soak, and you, you saw the rest. But then I was thinking, well, 
maybe I should use an immersion blender and just make it a, a puree kind of thing. It's like, no, no, people like to see what they're eating. And if you like cherries, you want to bite a cherry. So that's why I left it whole. Put the same thing as it is into a mixture before you make ice cream. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Okay. Like I said, I'm not a huge cherry fan, but this stuff, this is the exception. So this is ready. It's cold. It's been in the refrigerator. Now we are going to play. Um, I got the cakes here. I've got my icing. I got my filling. I got my decorations. We're ready. Um, I'm using my um, Kenmore Ovation mixer. My last video, I did a review on this mixer. Check it out. Kind of love it. So I've got, um, oh, here, just look, just look. Okay, by now you know how to make my sweet whipped cream. Whipped cream, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of vanilla, that's it. Um, whip it to whatever con consistency you like. I like it a little bit thicker. This time I'm not going to go as thick and I'm going to add that juice that I got from the pits. <laughs> so this is now a, a nice syrup. So I'm going to add this um, to, to make it a cherry flavored whipped cream. And yep, yeah, that's it. Let's, let's just play. <laughs> Okay, so I added a drop, one drop of red because I wanted that pink, um, that pink color. And mm, a very, very subtle, very subtle, maybe too subtle cherry flavor, but it's still tasty. So this is ready to go. So I told you different ways that you can cheat if you don't want to go this route. Okay, so the, um, the whipped cream, you can leave it white. Most people leave their black forest cakes with white icing. Perfect. Perfect. I just want a little pink. Um, you can put cherry jello gelatin in here. It's going to give you a good, uh, bit of a stabilizer too. So if you have something outside, not in the summer heat, but something outside where it's going to stay a while, um, it'll be able to endure that. Um, just go by taste. Don't put the whole bag in. Just go by taste. You want just a little pink color and a little cherry flavor. You don't want this to be um, battling, you're going to have an artificial flavor battling a natural flavor and they do battle. So that's, that's the only reason I don't. Now I could have taken some more of the compote juice and put it in here to give it a stronger cherry flavor. It's really subtle. I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that. Okay. I'm going to just assemble this and you guys can watch.
before I get to, into this, I want to explain what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to put some of this pink inside the top and the bottom of the cherry filling because this, this cherry filling will just hide inside that. You see, you won't, you won't really know what you're getting it and it won't even look like anything's there. So I'm going to take a layer of this icing, put it on top of the cake, put the cherry on top, put a layer of the icing on the other side and then flip it over so that you can see actually what's inside. size but I want to show you something which I kind of love when things are flawed but they don't matter okay so it you can see that it's seeping through a couple of the places <laughs> no one is gonna know because by the time we put our decorations on it's gonna hide them so we have our we have our chocolate we're gonna unroll it Keep it. Actually, I'm going to smash it. And I'm just going to line them up, just barely overlapping. Some of them are too big. I think I want to cut them down. Ah, let, me, let me do this. Let me, let me concentrate on this. Okay, so as you can see, I just kind of line them all up, and I'm just going to put some dollops. I was going to um, dip these in chocolate, but I really kind of like the way they look just sitting open like that, so I didn't. I need a couple more. Okay, that's it. I'm not going to cut this until I have it chilled for at least, uh, well, I'm not going to be eating it until after dinner, so I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and let it chill for about an hour or so just to kind of make everything nice and tight and uh, then I'll dig in. <clears throat> okay, it's chilled, it's set, it's nice and pretty. You can see what's in the middle. There's no surprise. And the icing kind of, the whipped cream keeps it separate so you can see what's inside and that kind of matters. Because without that, it would have it would have got lost. So, Mm. Hmm. I may just have to eat my words. Words, 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 words. 
this is really starting off with that chocolate cake it it, it doesn't matter what you do to it it's going to be a hit everything else just kind of works so perfectly together oh this is really good if you like black forest cake you're going to love this it's really up there so i'm gonna go finish this okay my friends until next time happy baking